let's take the vending machine model. Maybe it's not the best analogy, but I like using it. It's like, I okay, like it. uh, you see smart nonsense. We're the vending machine. We're the only one on the block that fucking serves soda. So like, if you want the fucking the best soda, whatever it is, you come here and you see all the different selection, like, like Sprite, Coke, Dr. Pepper, all these different styles that you can pick. But when you put your money in, pick your style, we're just going to spit out your clips. You spit out your soda. And here it is. Take the product. Welcome to the Smart Nonsense Podcast, where we talk about entrepreneurship, self-development, and challenging norms. I don't know what today is. No one Yesterday was dark. Yesterday was dark. Okay. We scrapped an episode, Pop. I don't remember the last time we did that. We... Have we, we ever? <laughs> wait, so what happened? We started recording. It was off to a bad start. My Wi-Fi craps out. Oh, it was your Wi-Fi and you got booted. And then it was me cooking for like five minutes by myself. I stopped the recording. The second you come back in the room, I got fed up. We had no material. We dropped it. And then the day, the day followed suit. The day was dark, Pop. Here's the thing, though. I have two parts to my day. The first half, which... <sighs> You gotta watch this on YouTube. You gotta watch this on YouTube. (laughs) There's a shirtless man in the background. (laughs) That's what we're laughing at. The first half, yeah, it was ruined because we had a podcast. We had several calls. Oh, I forgot about the second call. Three and a half hours of calls for me. Oh, yeah, you had a busy day. But luckily, I I just go on my bed. I listen to some audiobooks, take a couple hours off, and I bounce back and I come in hot. But by that time, you're cooked. You, you're like a, you're just a one batch sort of guy. I'm a two batcher. Right, and I got a small, small window of opportunity in my day. It's I, like I caught you in the delirious little woozy woozy. <laughs> oh, but that's where it happens. That's where it happens. Oh. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk Niv, about it. You got Niv on the docket. Nivy. The one we were trying to discover who oh, he's he is. Not, what? He's not on the docket. He's not on the docket. <laughs> Gotta uh, conceptualize him. So, okay, let, let, let's start there. Let's start there because we have this problem. This was on the docket yesterday on the canceled episode. We have this problem, Pop, where our energy, our giggly energy, it just feeds and it feeds and it feeds and we get to layers. We're stacking joke on joke. The improv, it's crazy. The layers, they're insane. <laughs> <laughs> and then we fire shit off to our idols expecting that they're in on these layered jokes. <laughs> It makes no sense. Everyone around us is like, these clowns, they, what the fuck is going on? And when it's one-way communication, it's only text. You can't tell. Like, Niv, Niv has said, this is Nivy, who is Naval Ravikant's kind of second in command. I don't know, their buddies, whatever. Uh, this has happened before when we were fucking with logos. And he's like, he, he put in this super, like, heartfelt message about how he cares about the logo and what, what he thinks we should do at, like, six in the morning his time. And we come in and, like... 100% Nivy, great idea. <laughs> and just fucking shit all over it and like take his. Uh, there's too much context there. I don't even know where to go back. But look at he's us. Like, are you guys fucking with me or are you being serious? I can't tell if you're stupid or you're pretending to be stupid. I'm like, we don't know either. <laughs> even our friends. And then we're like, God, our friends suck. But they're just not in on all these layered jokes we tell. I know. Yeah, they do all suck. What happened? We went out to dinner once with. We went on effectively a double date, right? And Athena, after that, was like, you guys With just talking. Who are you talking? Oh, oh, us. Uh, oh, yeah, us, me, you, dude. Anna, Athena. After the dinner, Athena's uh, like, you guys got to cut it out. you just talking inside jokes. like, And then you look at each other and you giggle. Like, nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> dude, that whole day was a giggle. Issa was asking. I don't know how that came up, but that story about Anna came up. And uh, that You can't be still- telling your girlfriends about Anna Pop. <laughs> You want to know another problem so, with the giggles? Yeah, hit them. Uh, okay, and then we'll explain what happened with Nivy. But here's the problem. It, this all came to a head two days ago when after we – it's like crack cocaine, right? We'll get the high of the giggle rush and we'll laugh for like 45 minutes. We just compound and then you feel it's like It's always shit. at like 9 p.m. <laughs> on the 9, 9, 10 p.m. You get a little lucid. You get loose. The other night we were on the phone. Man, we were giggling hard. And you know what happened when it was time to hang up? We both went, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we hung up the phone, and we were like, <laughs> we're, Dude, we're like, that what? was one of the toughest moments of my life. 
I was, I was like, because my family, okay, I don't tell them about anything in my love life at all. They just know, like, Dylan worked for, like, a dating coach, pickup artist, whatever you want to call him. And uh, they never heard of any of the girls I'm with. They only find out by, like, interrogating me. And so they finally find this girl, Issa, that I'm talking to. And uh, they're like, oh, he's not gay. I'm like, yeah. I don't they think should have and had then the it recording. makes me question. Then they're like, hey, hey, if they heard that sign off. <laughs> it was, t- we both texted each other, Jesus Christ. And then right after, I think, it was like, huh. Ta-ta. Uh, so the giggles need to stop. And uh, basically, what happened with Nivy is we just got all giggly goo. And what you started, you started looking up pictures of Nivy because, right? Like, we've I never interacted with these their, people. No, no, no. I was looking up Naval's wife for some reason. We were trying I, to find don't their ask spouse. Me why. We're just trying yeah, to like. I'm just we're just like, trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, they're crushing the. Oh, I think because Naval was like, "Yeah, I'm living a perfect life. I don't mm-hmm. like to talk about it, but my life's perfect." I'm like, "Hey, you crushing or what?" And then we look him up, and his wife's like, "Solid." I'm like, "All right." Nice Link that uh, he was talking to the great CEO within right. about hiring Matt a CEO. He's mockery, mockery, Matt mochery, Ma- mochari. Machari, Machari. There you Could go, Ma- Machado. Machari. So, um, yeah, Naval is like his life's an eleven out of ten since hiring a CEO. Mm. And you're like, well, why? Let me let me see who he spends his time with. And right. he looked up his wife, and then we looked up. This sounds ridiculous. <laughs> this is the giggles. And then we looked up Nivi, and here's the four pictures of Nivi. Right, if you're watching this on YouTube, and he he's got like a different alter ego in each picture. Yeah. God, this See, isn't the- funny after the giggles. <laughs> it's not. It's not at all. I'm, just- I'm thinking in my head. I'm like, should we show the B-roll of our whole like night's worth of text? We probably we'd have to. I don't know half if we can. It's it's. But yeah, it's even even good. then, it, it's it's kind of like they had this problem. Like whose line is it anyway? I think it was the improv show. Maybe you see clips on YouTube. Uh, it's it's funny shit, but it didn't work. Like it. The show just didn't work because improv live is infinitely better than watching it recorded because you're not mm. in the moment. So we're kind of like the improv live. And then after the fact, people are like, how the fuck is that funny? And we're like, that's right. I don't know. It is a giggly goo. It's the, so I fire this thing off to Nivy. It's freaking hilarious um, to you and well, me at 10 he, p.m. on a Sunday. The problem is this. So Nivy, the first we ever heard of Nivy. Uh, was when he like DM'd you, I think, and we're like, oh, I think that's the guy who does the podcast. But his profile picture on Twitter is his goofy face. He like crazy, looks fucking whacked totally out. So it's nonsense, smart non- nonsense. He'd send us some audios, and he's got some nonsense in the audios, and some of his uh, like he'd retweet us sometimes and say goofy things or respond to our our shareholder letters, and we're like, oh, this guy's a goofball. So when we look him up, I'm looking up his wife. Uh, his wife isn't on the internet, but it's him. And we get this quadrant of four Nivies, and they're all different people. One's a fucking model. The other one's this goofball we saw, and two or others are like in, in this weird... I think the, the top left corner in this grid, I think that's what got us both to say Mwah! to each other. I know. I, w- I could have... Maybe that's the thing. You know how like they say uh, sexual orientation is a spectrum? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I, I'm, I go from objects to females, and there's males yep, in the middle. Yep, and I, yep. I hit all. It depends where I'm at, what time of day, what what day of the month, if it's a full moon or not. There's a lot of variables. This is like, I mean, I think we've said on here, but like you, you do get aroused by the company's clips. You do. Not all of them, but like, you'll like know. Like three. You'll know. You'll hear about it. I start pacing and breathing heavily. <laughs> so... um no more moi. Okay, I wake up the next morning. I look at the Nivy message. He gives us a, a half-hearted, nonsensical response. I'm like, this isn't funny at all. What were we thinking? <laughs> right. But but it is funny. And we, we kind of agreed to this after. We're like, oh, this would have been good as an audio message. Because, Henry, your, your character in this group, it's, <laughs> it's like Naval, Nivy, and a couple other cool guys repurposing their stuff. Henry's not Butch. in there except to, to cause nonsense. Yeah, Butcher's in there too, Jack Butcher. Uh, so you just come in out of the blue at random times and say random shit. But there's no context and people don't know your character well enough. Yeah, so yeah. it's just like, what, what is this? And then they just ignore it. Like, what was funny too was this, <laughs> this is like immediately after Naval just like let down his, <laughs> his life's purpose message that was like a, a blog post worth of content. 
And he was like opening his heart and hardly anyone gave him a response. And then Belky comes in out of nowhere. He's like, hey, Nevi, which one's you? Help me conceptualize. <laughs> Having trouble conceptualizing. That was the f- <laughs> It's true, though. Yeah. They have no idea who we are or who they are. You it's, know what's really crazy? Confusing. A year ago, I would have... I was dreaming of the day Naval would text me a message like that. And now I see it, I'm like, Nivy! I knew that. It's just like, <laughs> dude, I don't get this world. I don't get this well, world. The, so the thing is like, kick I thought me, about Naval. this. You got to kick me. It's always like people that are celebrities or, or known for something. And this was the first thing with Todd because Todd, like if you're in that community, he's, he's a god. So when you're in that room, it's like, oh, my God, you just wanted to, like, be very agreeable, say yes to everything and, like, never kind of tease them. You're just, like, listening and, like, oh, yeah, they're, they're, it's gospel, what comes out of their mouth. Versus I think why our role, uh, especially your character on the Internet, at least, kind of in general now, is just chaos. You don't care who it is. Half the time, we don't know, like, when you showed up to the, the call. Oh, the dude, Bolt it is squad. in general. Yeah. Yeah. Showing up to that it's call just, yesterday. Oh. The one thing we've realized over the last year is life is a joke. All these people are clowns. They all have their flaws. It's like there's no need to put them on a pedestal. You still get that butterfly feeling occasionally. But they respect the people that aren't afraid to shit on them or like tease them or make jokes like a normal human would. What did Sivers say in that quote? Something about life is meaningless. No, dude. You can't read that book. Oh, my God. Did that get scrapped in the episode yesterday? That's the giggles, dude. (laughs) Dude, I can't recreate how funny that was. I know. It's really sad, dude. Oh, we have a great time. I was thinking about it when I was washing the dishes. I'm like, because I'm, I I contribute. You were thinking about me when you were washing the dishes. Actually, though, I'm like, this journey is, is so fun. It's like, it's absolutely absurd. Thank God the podcast does it like 10% justice. But if people only knew. If people only knew. Go read the book How to Live by Derek Sivers. Let us know what you think. How about that? Jesus Christ. That one ripped me <laughs> apart. I'm already buying copies from and people before I And then built you back up. And then built you back up. Let's, uh, oh, fuck. I don't have a good transition here. You know another uh, problem, Pop? Here's my transition. Yeah, save me. Every other day, we, you have me ask my brother if he can operate this company. And then mm. two days later, we fix it, and we don't want to hire him again. I've done that six times, the poor bastard. <laughs> no, dude. No, dude. I'm he, like, yo, come work for himself. us. We'll pay you 200 grand a year. We want you to operate this, grow it to the freaking moon. Wait, actually, never mind. No, we don't. Yeah. That's we figured the thing. it out. Even, even – uh, we had two calls yesterday. I want to talk about the second one at some point too. But the first one was with our CFO team, basically outsourcing CFO. Um, they were asking about direction of the company because we're, we're starting to create other corporations and companies within our kind of umbrella. And they're like, hey, this is from the time we last talked, this is the structure we're thinking about. We're like, hey, you know, you know what we talked about like two days ago? Yeah, we're going to scrap that entirely. Uh, we're actually going to do this company structure again. And then two days later or last night, I hit you with, hey, Belky. Um, what if we completely changed everything and Scrap Smart Nonsense that's just for the podcast and Clipped is everything? Yeah, we haven't even addressed that today. That's the elephant. And, and then the accountant, the, the CFO squad, they're like, okay, well, well this is news to us. We, let's figure this out. We're like, yep, news to us too. How about that? <laughs> we all learning together. But phantom equity. Thing. She's like, who are you giving phantom equity? We're like, we don't know. Somebody. Do you want some? <laughs> Here it is. Uh, so, dude, there's this guy dancing do you on this think, fucking balcony Do you outside. think we can't grow this podcast because it's like our dinners with Athena? Pop. Uh, it's just inside jokes. Listen to us. I know. No one's getting it. The, the problem is there's actual value tucked away here. You gotta but, uh, extract it. It's like how to live. Go read that book. You just gotta wait till the end. It's like the Dobrik vlog where you get to after the outro. That's when all the good stuff comes out. Well, I don't okay, like so Dobrik anymore. Number. He's a YouTuber. He's a standard vlogger now, and he's just like, "Good morning. Today we are going to the airport." I'm like, I know. Hey, I wish. I wish he did night. both. I wish that was his uh, his two channel. Like his two channel was that, and his ah, original channel is still the highlight. So highlight nice. reel. Yeah, uh, it's growing on me, but um, yeah, it's not the same. 
Jesus. Christ. As long as you're happy. Uh, dude, he's got the weirdest dance moves. Nah, I can't say. But uh, so that was call number one. And basically, like Belky, we're talking about the, our company changes every single day. And I'm like, how do people set up any structures that are lasting? Or like, like even I put up the job post and everyone's DMing me on Instagram. And we're like, you know what? Uh, we're actually not going to hire this role. Yeah, right. Anymore. My dad just referred. We just like, we we realize in, in the pressure and in the pain points of doing these things, like a lot of the shit we do is because it's the status quo, right? You're saying so many things change. Hey, where'd you go? Your video's gone. I'm here. But like, this is really what's happening, right? Oh, People easy. should That's go see this. Doing? That's what I was doing. I was making a drawing. Oh, and it's like stock market. Everything changes, and we we have to go down. Like today, we're gonna go down a bit. We're gonna you know no, shift around dude, some clients. It's but different it's like, though. And let me draw my own up version. into the right, <laughs> up into the right. No, I mean you drew a graph, and it looks like the stock market, and that's that's fine. But it it assumes it's sort of this linear. Pattern. Oh, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Let me let me let me dude. Let me hey, here. I amended that? it. Look, I amended it. Oh, it gets exponential now. Yeah, she goes hey, straight up. Straight up to the I, sky. Yeah, but here's the difference, though. This shit is 3D. So it's it's popping up. Like, it, you're thinking it's going on this plane, and then out of all of a sudden, it's like, nope, we're going on that plane. And it fucking darts point. over there. You don't know what plane it's going to be on. And that's the problem. Because then we get the CFOs, and they're like, hey, which fucking plane are we going to be on? Because we want to hang out there a while. We're like, we don't know. Could be we Z. Ain't hanging out. Could be Q could be r you never know what plane so uh point being uh we change often our our last change was last night and (laughs) this is uh, most people say like our last our last change was last quarter that's when we made a big pivot no (laughs) this was last night through the morning it was overnight it was we're we're realizing we almost hired another one of our friends uh who's like responded to one of my things and like oh that would be really fun to work with and then we start rationalizing why they'd be amazing to work with and uh, oh yeah i'm like okay xander and jack they're gonna run the company but then we're like oh when can jack get up to speed we really want to run with this clipped marketplace idea uh and there's a huge opportunity cost opportunity cost to not doing it so uh basically we're waiting for you to get on the phone with jack and decide okay jack when can you actually get on He's like, I don't know, dude. Depends on this deal with my current company. It could be uh, two months. It could be six. Who the fuck knows? And we're like, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. We got this new constraint. Circle up. Circle up. We, yeah, huddle up. Uh, circle, powwow. Words. So we you can't get say in this powwow anymore. Circle. Don't. No, dude. You can't. It's gone. Why not? It's up from powwow? the vernacular. You know you can't even say vernacular. How about that? How about that, Pop? So we had a powwow last night, <laughs> and I was like, okay, w- let's assume that for the next six months, Jack can't be with us. Ideally, he would be at some point, because I think he would actually be super helpful to growth, especially uh, in America. Like, it's good to have someone online here. But so we think. So we think. <laughs> I know. It, it's <laughs> fucking, we might be wrong. We'll update you tomorrow after we talk tonight. <laughs> but the idea is, okay, we have this constraint. And I love constraints because, like, now what do we do? Well, we're we're atrocious at hiring, at least in the U.S. Like, we're really bad at that. And when I think back, I forget what book it was, but it's like the most successful companies that replace the CEO do it from within, not from without or fucking outside of it. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> without. How about that? And so we're like, every time, every time we have this issue, we're like, oh, we need a manager to be like down just in the trenches and ripping it I'm like no we don't need a manager from the states or anything like that let's just hire within let's just promote our team uh get the most competent ones that really embody smart nonsense and and get what we're doing and do it our big concern was like hey this sort of coo ceo type role of like they're running the company i don't know if they're cut out for that because we just hired them as dope animators and some of them happen to have awesome english and just be like uh very communicative in general and as of last night showing that they care enough oh, to get yeah. pushback that was a beauty that you got was vetoed. really you got, got vetoed, vetoed by a junior employee <laughs> junior. unbelievable junior this is and 
Look, okay, so No Rules Rules is this book about Netflix's culture, and we've been trying to preach it for forever, uh, where basically anyone in the company can say to the CEO or anyone else, like, hey, uh, what you did was wrong, and here's why, but always make it like you're aiming to assist them, and it's very actionable. And then it's this whole four feedbacks thing. But uh, we've been telling everyone in the Philippines, like, hey, do this. I know it's kind of weird for your culture especially. It's weird for us too. But give pushback. We're stupid. We don't know what we're doing. We need your help and guidance with all of this. And the only way we get there is through feedback. So finally, we're beginning to get the code cracked on them opening up and being like, these clowns actually don't know what they're doing. They're fucking stupid. I have to step in. Hold on. So many things, right? So we had been on the phone for an hour laboring over the direction of the company going towards a product. We were kind of getting the giggles. We were solving our problems. We had come, come up with a solution to move forward. Then we both are coming off the call. We go into Slack and you get just the veto of the century, right? Tony hits you. She's like, yeah. Dylan, can I please veto this um, decision you've made because this reason, this reason, and this reason. Oh, and by the way, because of these three things, what are we as a company? And it's like, right. whoa. Right, right. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, when you get to first principles, you, you ask why at every step. Like she asked the first why. Hey, why is Dylan saying this? Oh, his assumption was wrong about what our strategy is. Oh, what's our strategy? And you like ask, why are we doing that strategy? Why are we successful as a company? And you get down to the root of like, hey, we're the Mercedes Benz of clips. We just do it better than anyone else. That is our distinct advantage. And this is kind of trickling back as we're connecting all these fucking loose ends uh, to that second call that I mentioned earlier with this guy, Sahil Bloom. Uh, he, he got on the phone with his marketing team and us, and they were talking about, hey, what, what do you offer? And like, <laughs> we sent them the rule book. I don't know if half of them saw it, but uh, we basically get into the sales pitch. And we're, we're fucking, we, we just haven't had to sell anything ever because we're the only ones doing what we're doing. It, 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 it'd be like, imagine this, like, imagine your, your Gmail, right? And Gmail does like one thing on the web, it's, it's email. Like, it would be bizarre if you had to sell Gmail to somebody. Like, we have it all spelled out. This is what we do. This is how you buy it. We don't really have our process. But for us, it's like, to, to get on a call and have to pitch it, it, it just doesn't make sense. Right, it just, we did one felt- thing weird because whenever we hear this has happened a few times uh when was the other time oh it was with uh carmen with uh social Capital. ali abdal almost right? oh that was but different. he was really i, in I the mean dark. in the sense that uh yeah he had no idea what, what we were doing and that's fair we sent him the rule book like a month before we talked but and it's also changed every day and it changed but in, in essence it's like whenever they bring up hey we're we're talking to a couple other people in this space Whenever we hear that, we're like, oh, I don't think you realize what we do. Right. Because no one else does what we do. So if you're talking to other people, this is the comparison, not a choice thing. Like, you don't want to be the comparison. You don't want to be, oh, let's compare Smart Nonsense to Joe Schmo Clip Company. Because they're just, they're not on the same level. We haven't seen anyone do what we're doing. Except on YouTube, but that's long form. We're the only ones doing premium short form. So whenever they say that... We're instantly like, okay, they're going to compare our quote, which is what Sawhill said at the end. He's like, normally people charge strategy and then they charge clips on top of it. And that's probably why they probably charge like 300 bucks a clip and 10 grand for strategy or something. And the math comes out similarly, but it's, well, we don't want to offer strategy. But we're, we're in this mindset of like, okay, when you come in with that, you don't understand what we do. And that's a failure on us. Like, where are we failing where it's not clear that we're the only ones doing this? Because he did see our clips. Granted, I don't know if his marketing company saw our clips. But the bigger issue is like someone, and we got this problem with the job posts, someone wants to join Smart Nonsense, whether as an employee, Mm -hmm. a contractor, or a client. Where do they go? And it's just everything you need to know about Smart Nonsense and all our content is just there. And you get the full picture in a minute of scrolling through a page. We kind of had that with the rule book, but not really. And so no, and the then, fundamental problem yeah. for us was we don't have this website that's amazing and people just go to it. It's like, hey, smartnonsense.com. That's it. Just check it out. You have everything you need to know. Like I was supposed to have a call earlier today where we're going over like, oh, let's see if we can work together. I'm like, 
in terms of there, 10 for 10. Like, yeah, do you right. want it or not? So you're getting all these emails for like strategic partnerships and do we want to sponsor this thing? And it's like, we're just running a business. Like we have one product. We're not going to change that based on a partnership. Like if you need help, you can have 10 clips. You can have 20 clips. You can have 30 <laughs> clips. Well, we can scale like, um, right. It's, it's just simple. So basically we're, what we decided on, and this gets back into like who's running the company, we're like, let's take the vending machine model. Maybe it's not the best analogy, but I like using it. It's like, I okay, like it. Uh, you see Smart Nonsense, we're the vending machine. We're the only one on the block that fucking serves soda. So like, if you want the fucking the best soda, whatever it is, you come here. And you see all the different selection, like, like Sprite, Coke, Dr. Pepper, all these different styles that you can pick. But when you put your money in, pick your style, we're just going to spit out your clips. You spit out your soda. And here it is. Take the product. We're not going to variable price things like, oh, depending on how much strategy you need or whatever. It's just like hit the button. We'll spit you out a clip and you just post. That's our strategy. Here's the paradox too, right? The people that are coming to us have a problem. And that's like they can't consistently put out short form content. And what's happening is about half of our clients, we let into the feedback funnel. We let them in mm. on the process. And... The paradox is they came to us because they had these problems. So now they're in they're in our feedback loop and we're creating right. the same problems over time and then we're resenting that project or whatever it is. Meanwhile, we look at the other half of our clients where we're just letting the team crank, they're following our rules, they're in for it, and we're producing the most amazing content we've ever seen. Right. So right. we gotta like we need trust and it's hard to do without a website. It's hard to do without a lot of things, but we got we to gotta figure this out and be clear in our messaging. Right. Well, I mean, that's what's hilarious to me when we get a new client like Synthesis and out of nowhere, you're like, oh, my God, did you see the clips? I'm like, no, I haven't seen the clips yet. And I go in and I scroll back a couple days and I look at the last two clips. I'm like, these are fucking mind blowing. And we had no input, like zero at all. And it comes back from that place of trust of like, uh, do you think that they can do it? And clearly they've just risen when you give them that that freedom, granted we haven't cracked the code on like Darmesh thumbnails, for example, that's why we're gonna change our arrangements with them. But uh, mm -hmm. basically when you figure out, hey, they're competent here, let them run with it. It's because people don't understand our competence yet that they're like afraid to let us run with it. And sometimes we kind of like, we don't have, we're not looking at all the posts and how they perform necessarily, which we should be, or at least like the head of sixes should be accountable for that. So we're missing a lot of like certain things don't look the best because a lot of our animators were just creating the clip. They don't see it go out in the world. They don't hear the comments. They don't hear the successes or the failures and they just keep producing. So that's, you know that's think kind of where it is helpful sometimes. I think maybe we set up a bot in Slack that goes out on Fridays and it's just like the feedback bot. And they can put whatever they want there, and the team can read it first thing Monday morning. Maybe. Uh, but, like, yeah, I don't know how we get them out of the the feedback loop the, of revisions. But regardless, we're pretty close to being out of it, uh, much closer than before. And we're basically telling well, the plan today is for us to figure out how to tell our clients that aren't on this 10 for 10, which our legacy clients from, like, August, July, uh, hey, we kind of signed up before we, we really locked in our specialty. Clearly, we're struggling in this aspect. Like, for example, uh, Untold, which is this uh, YouTube channel. They're doing like eight-minute videos. We're like, okay, we can probably do that, but we're basically struggling with it. And the first, this basically this new hire, his very first edit right out of the gate he, he drops a 60 second clip because we just transitioned them to doing more 60 seconds to test it is a fucking banger. Like no edits needed. It's just like ready to go. And we're like, this is our specialty. What the fuck are we doing with eight minute videos? And now we have to go back and figure out how we just get everyone on 10 for 10. And then once we're there, this is the idea where we don't need Jack to run the company. We just need someone within the team. It's like, hey, we offer one product. This is it. This is exactly how it goes for every single person. It's cookie cutter. It's this template. And then we just sell and make sure everyone's stoked. Make sure that template is still the best. Like it's going to perform well. And we should have no issues. Just fucking scale. Henry and on top and I, of that, like, run... right, you and yeah, I keep on. showing up to strategy calls. And we're like, 
every time before we get on a call, we're like, there is no strategy. The strategy is create cool content consistently and do it for a long time, right? Like the expectation is we'll be making you clips for five years. There's, there's nothing we can do to get you rich quick in, in terms of building a community. Well, okay, so here's the difference. I think with Darmesh, for example, say we were just going to keep doing his content. I basically told him last night, like, hey, we're in this plateau and we've been here for like two, three months where we're getting like a little under 30,000 views a month, uh, which is good. But you want to be at 100,000. You want to be much higher and we haven't moved at all. Why? Because our content is generic. And so we need this sort of like these moments. I guess part of me is like we need on the first of the month, we just go over strategy and review it. It's kind of like the... That's why calls exist in the first place is like you said it yesterday, Bucky, is just a like force action. Forcing function. Yeah, forcing function, which like our CFO calls were like, hey, this is an email. Why are we here? And it, it drains you and fucking throws off the day. Yeah, she needed like three bits of she needed three bullet point pieces of info from us. And it was an hour long call. But it and then forced us all about to sit how... in the room and do it, which is. But. I don't know. People are just so they're still on this thing of like, you need calls. And I'm like, can we just have a strategy uh, day? It's just like, hey, we're going to message about strategy, but we're not going to get on the phone. Like just in the first of the month, we hmm. address everything. And uh, I think that's better. But people love seeing each other's faces. So it's like they're more likely to re up with us when they see our faces. We like shoot the shit. So it's one of those soft things. It's like it, it's so it hard, right? Because like. Like we've said, say we have 15 clients, like you and I can't, we can't scale strategy for 15 people and grow a business. It's just, it's just, it's too much. Unless we hired someone like the problem, the problem with us, cause we could have Tony on the phone doing strategy with them. We could have anyone on the phone really on our team, uh, or at least the captains. But it's the time zone issues, and it's like, oh, do they want to meet at 9 p.m.? And it's like, no, it kind of sucks. But then you don't need to get, get on the phone. I'm the just not place. sure. Yeah, I'm just not sure I like. I, I even believe in it. You look at the the My First Million. And so my my preference is like eliminate strategy first and foremost. Because you look at the MFM guys. They put out two episodes a week. They'll spend one of those episodes every single week talking about these different schemes they're going to do to grow. And they right. do some of them. They don't do the others. They spend a lot of money trying things. They spend a lot of money hiring. Their growth is is like this. It's it's totally stagnant. I'm like, I I want to hear them stop talking about schemes, and instead talk about how they're going to commit to podcasting for four years. Right. Maybe it's not like. So what happened with our mesh yesterday? It's like, hey, we noticed the problem in the middle of the month. We don't need a dedicated day to go over strategy. It's just, let's be cognizant how everything's performing and then tweak it here and there. Like, oh, let's change where we're posting. But we're still going to do the same clips, same consistency, but it's just like ongoing strategy. Or it's not even... More, more open. I don't know. It's just like it gets into the like marketing in general. Uh, right. I don't know. There's that thing of like, it helps sell. It helps sell, but you don't need it. And it's fucking infuriating. Right, so I'm like, right, we're trying to hide, hire this growth marketer. And you want to bring in a marketer? I'm like, they're going to come in, test a bunch of stuff with titles and thumbnails. We're still going to get 250 views a video. And it's still going to take five years. Right. Everyone but just some trying people to get hack quick. growth. Some people do hack it. I think we, we figured that out with our... Um, distribution circle right where we can distribute clients and they in turn are getting new eyeballs on our stuff that points back to our brand right that's brilliant and we need someone to run socials we're not oh did you see i just outsourced our uh naval socials yeah yeah it's yeah that's nice. <laughs> I got out of that, that was nice that was nice um so basically well the point is we, yeah uh we're just trying to get more to a product than a service or a product that makes it a lot easier for us to scale the team internally. Like take, okay. No, hey, no, no, no. Hey, you're no, a lot more excited than me. Go ahead. You just said, it. here's, <laughs> give it to me. The problem straight. is the, the, the problem with strategy. I'll give it to you straight is we can't make any guarantees. We don't know shit. 
We don't know what shit's going to pop. We don't know what's going to go viral. Nobody does. If a marketer is promising you results or guarantees, run for the freaking hills because nobody knows what's going on. So I'm like, we should just take the stance that we can't predict this stuff. So we're going to set you up for success by posting two or three times a week, high quality stuff. That's that's where I like our strategy. Maybe we have this on like, hey, we don't do strategy calls because this is our strategy. We're going to put out 10 clips. We're going to see what performs best. And from there, iterate on what worked well and cut out what doesn't. That's our strategy. And just do that for the long term. The same way we like, we're doing all these, these client work and then we're like, stop it hone make the rule book the rule book was too aggressive it's like hone it in a different direction now it's like the final bit of honing probably hear this ice on my teeth that was really stupid yeah the final bit of honing is like this is our stance on strategy and we don't do it and this is why we don't do it right and which i think the golden goose. i think that's fair when you say why and things like that so basically our, our next steps we're going to make a little executive boot camp so that everyone that we want to run the company is like, here's everything in Henry and my head. Henry, Henry's head and mine? I don't know. Uh, Something like that. We're distilling our favorite books. Maybe we do some book clubs. We don't know what the boot camp's going to look like. But it's one of those decisions where like, Jack can't join for six months. So let's try and build the team internally. And Bezos has this where it's like, there are two types of decisions, uh, type one and type two. And the difference... I guess type one is reversible, type two is irreversible or something. Um, Most decisions are reversible. And even here, it's like, say we train them with this business mindset so they can be more so like owners versus just employees, contractors. Uh, Once we teach them these things, even if Jack comes in and we no longer need them for that more executive role, well, that's fine. Now they have the skills, now they can just be better captains. So it's, it's honestly, it's a win-win. Like we don't lose in this scenario of doing this sort of executive boot camp. Right. Which is brilliant. Um, I think that's all I got, Pop. It looked like it. It looked like it. You look real <laughs> tired. Uh, no, yeah. No, I'm and thinking I'm firing on all cylinders. We didn't talk about the Naval Spartan video. I don't know if you had any takeaways from that. My big takeaway was like, find your flow. Our flow is blitzing and working on this marketplace, which we both want to do, and shooting videos. Right, uh, and then, you know, I talked to my brother, and I'm like, you know, we got to write this little memo today about bonus structure and, and why we pay the way we do. And I'm like, here's four reasons I don't want to do that. And he's like, it sounds pretty easy. I mean, it's like, it's just, it's a paragraph. And I'm like, yeah, it is. But my, right. my and Dylan's zone of genius is something completely different. And we're going to play right. to that zone of genius. Well, that's, that's like we look at the C, CFO team and you're like, Jessica, she's just going through making sure all our transactions are coded. She probably, I don't know if she loves it, but she clearly likes it more than we would like doing it. And it's like, okay, that's your specialty. You run with that. Uh, my concern with this team is like they came in as animators. I don't know if they want to be running a company because we came at it from the business side to the creative. They're coming from creative to business, which we've seen uh, with Westbrook and others. It's like... It's a real dangerous world coming from that direction. So that's my main concern. But we're going to see like, hey, do you actually want to learn this stuff? And then maybe we'll teach them. Maybe we'll make a, a course out of that boot camp, uh, the agency vending machine model. You know, it's it's been on my, uh, like my list of video ideas for a while, but basically like the six books we read to get an MBA. Mm. Yeah, but okay. Part of me is like... <sighs> Part of me is how much is it the stuff we read versus just experience? Like right. we get in there, sort of when you feel the pain, you know you have to change. And we, we feel the yeah, pain right, right now with our mesh thumbnails and we're like, okay, we have to change. Luckily, we have these references in the books. We're like, okay, what should we do? Well, let's refer back to the four-hour work week. What are your options? First, you eliminate. Try and eliminate anything that you can. We're like, okay, let's just eliminate doing the thumbnails and titles for our mesh. First, we tried to have him do them, so sort of like delegate to him. But then we're like, no, fuck it. Let's just get out of this world in general. Let's just tell him we're 10 for 10. So we eliminate that. And kind of like what I said, it's like a three-step process, I think. Eliminate. If you can't eliminate, then you automate. If you can't automate, then you delegate. And it's not like we're going to be able to automate titles and thumbnails. So uh, that sort of framework, it's just helpful to have. But you also need the experience to really 
uh, know what to do and kind of I make think it too, more intuitive. I think too, you also need a co-founder, which is why I really like the idea. Mm. It's right, like most of it's just freak. Like nobody, nobody knows anything. The books we have, they don't have all the nuance, right? They don't hold the key to like truth, and so it's mostly just like picking something, picking an idea, and moving, and not laboring right. over it. Um, so I hope if we can like basically bring up two kick-ass people uh, to operate like we do, they they gotta they gotta kind of interact like we do. But right. I hope that they can just like choose something quick, go for it, and correct it, course. I think it's trainable. Honestly, probably Angel gets it because she's been fucking in watching all Naval's content, all this stuff. But I think it's teachable to anyone. They just haven't. Like, we're very unique. Even Sahil, for example, he's like, hey, why are you behaving not like an agency? Like, this is what all agencies do. That was like, so even crazy. the people at the top, they don't know what to do. Westbrook, you see them scrambling, ASAPing everything. You're like, we might be the only ones in the agency model really doing this right. And that's how we can grow so fast. Because right. agencies just tread water for decades. Right. They spend 25 years doing one off projects, well, and then they're like, oh, here's, we're, we're tired. We crack the code in the sense that we found something where it's recurring. So most agencies, it's like, oh, we'll build a website. But then once we're done building, we've got to start selling again. And it's this constant fucking terrible cycle. We're like, hey, we're content producers for podcasts. And podcasts are ongoing. So we kind of hacked it from there. And uh, they're just and a bunch of And we built this moat where there's no competition, right? So like I remember MailChimp as an agency, they couldn't get beyond like 300 grand a year in revenue for their agency uh, work because – they were all working, maxing out revenue, and they weren't selling, right? We've talked about this. And because they weren't selling, then they don't have work for the following month. So it's just like this vicious cycle. What's funny is my brother, and at some point we'll wrap this up, but my brother, he had, uh, he texted me out of nowhere. He's like, yo, I'm sick of my company. He has, I don't know how many people in his company, but it's a roofing company. And uh, it's pretty big. It does well. He's like, I'm sick of this shit. I'm just going to fire everybody, sell my building, and just work with, like, a handful of people I trust most on cool projects and make, like, mm. fucking 50 grand a year. I don't care. I, I sell everything. Just live in the woods. And he's like, I'm like, yo, why do you feel that way? And he's like, well, the only way you get ahead is by fucking people. Because mm. uh, basically they're all bidding on contracts and sort of, like, the comparison model. They don't give up. Like, a roof is a roof. It is a commodity. So you're just comparing price quotes. And so the only way he finds a little like, uh, I think the thing is like you'll find a flaw in their blueprints or their plans. And then you're like, you can bid lower because of that. I don't know. It's something where you like fuck people. So it's basically miserable for him. And I'm like, you got to get out of there. You got to be the specialty roofer or like somehow be premium because that's how you escape price and you turn into the choice not the comparison what, so. what's naval escape competition through authenticity yeah i mean he'd have to build a brand about like it's just hard it's a really hard industry because a roof is a roof and you just want to get you should it down. give him the four hour work week i did oh did he read I, it literally i bought it for him like five years ago i don't think i think he read it but then he's it's it's sort of the problem of dissonance it's like oh you get into it and you're like well i'm 45 I wish I had this 20 years ago. Fuck yeah, I'm already on the streak. I don't want to. Yeah, the inertia, man. It's, it's the inertia. Uh, okay, well, that's that's all we got for now. Um, we might be a Filipino-only company. Might be the first ever. That's what I want to do. I want to challenge these norms of, like, uh, everyone international can't run a company. Fuck it. Here's They're smart. Here's my last point. Here's my last point on norms, and it's the last on my list. Every time we don't challenge norms... And we try and go with the status quo for whatever reason, we fail. Right. Every single time. Hey, you saw my tweet? Yeah. Norms course. get normal results, and normal results suck. How about like that? Normal results is you make 50 grand a year working a nine to five for 40 years, and you're pretty miserable the whole time. How you about don't want that? that? Challenge norms. Challenge them norms, baby. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, I was going to do more, <laughs> but we don't do that because you shut that down. So I guess we, we don't do that. that. Part of the level.